Hello, YouTube. How are you all doing? And welcome to the sound live. We're in a heat wave here. It's going to be 99 degrees in Oregon today. How y'all doing? Today with me I have Evelyn Holland. Evelyn is a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. What are you up to these days, Evelyn? I'm continuing progress on the, th the third record. I just, I just tracked some bass yesterday. I have <laughs> Kyle Walls. <laughs> Kyle hey. is a singer, songwriter, and musician, guitarist. Kyle, what are you up to these summer days? Last week, uh, I picked up my guitar one morning and was going through some songs I'd written in the last few months. And there was one I was, I liked it when I wrote it, but then I, I haven't really liked it. I was like, eh, maybe I'm going to take that one off my list of ones that I might do. For some reason, my fingers started playing it in a way that I really, really like. So I recorded a draft. I, I shared it with my patrons and stuff. But it was it was cool that I sat down and I use uh, session drum tracks for my original music and stuff. So I found some drums I liked. I got everything arranged really cool. I added some bass. And uh, it, it was fun to uh, sit down and record again because it's, it's been a been a little little while since I recorded something new, you know, studio wise. So that's fun stuff. So everybody says that Dimash can sing above the range of the piano. I have never that I know of heard any man or woman do this in my entire life. So, um, and this is an original song too. Um, and so he wrote this song to go up into whistling off the top of the piano everyone says it's gorgeous um this is a live performance for a hundred and fifty thousand or hundred fifty five thousand screaming fans and um it's supposed to be a pretty incredible performance and so that's why i picked it i bumped it up on the request list for y'all because um i'm just so ridiculously curious um to hear this one what do you think eve uh i mean how how many have we reacted to at this point? Like two of them, I think. Yeah, we did SOS, and then we did the Diva Dance, which was very, very, very short. Uh, right. yeah, I remember the. I yeah, that was that was last week. The uh, D uh, Diva Dance, excuse me. Right, right. That was that was with uh, with Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I I mean, yeah. If he you said he can, he gets up to D eight in this. That's I didn't say that. That's what my commenters were saying. Oh, so yeah, I I'm, I'm just like what? Like I I haven't heard Mariah Carey sing that high. Like <laughs> I'm and I mean she's like you know at least in America she's the one when people think of when they think of you know whistle tone singing really high from a sort of modern you know like you know I guess Ella Fitzgerald would be before that right you know breaking the glasses. Right. Um, that, that I still think that'd be a cool party trick. Just uh, you definitely wouldn't want to do that to people's glasses when they were in their hands, right. that, especially if they had had like a, uh, wine or something. I don't know, whatever. Oh, that the... that fancy stuff, man. You know, make sure you thumb this up if you're a Dimash fan. You want more people to see. I'm sharing Dimash with the world, so please thumb it up, like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. Hit Evelyn's page, hit Kyle's page, subscribe. Anything else you guys want to say before we begin this one? Are you ready? ready. Let's do it. All right. This is a little bit long. Once five minutes is something. I'm excited. So without further ado, Musicians Panel reacts to Dimash. And this is Unforgettable Day Gaku. Here we go. <laughs> Bir gün gelin 
aşık oldum özünge Yürgeli ki balda tetti sözünge Kolağım min pavra baldı şanımda Kare verdim norga tolı şözünge It was just that one place where he hit that that uh that D eight. That was that, that wasn't dig digitally altered. 
it sounded real to me. I I I, I don't. I, I thought it sounded like a freaking piccolo or something, man. <laughs> it was like, it was just. I mean, I get. I guess that's what whistle tone would be. Is just so like yeah. airy, but it felt like it was just like it was like that airy sound mixed with the 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 pitch mixed with like that blowing over a coke bottle kind of sound. So I can imagine to do that. Uh, he had to have his throat just so incredibly relaxed. I, I can't. I can't possibly imagine. I, I, I mean, yeah, that's probably why he could only do it in like a short burst like that too. Yeah. Hey, have you uh, either you seen uh, people do like the like the record setting for for singing like that? Ah, uh, I haven't. No. Because um. The, there's a video or two uh, when I was giving guitar lessons that I don't know, a student and I, we, we I chased that tangent one time. And this guy would hold his one nostril shut and talking about whistle tones, you know, because it's, it's pretty much all coming out of your sinus cavity. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, and because um, I was curious, because, uh, you know, pulling up this video, you see the suggestions. There's a whole bunch of things about, you know, Dimash, high snow, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all those things that to let you know, oh, he's going to sing a high note in this video. So I was curious to see, you know, how he would get, get ready, for, like what he was doing right before he hit that note and stuff like that. Because um, he he's such a, a performer, you know, and being on his knees on the, you know, in that position might not be the easiest to get airflow. So I was really curious how that was going to gonna work out if that's, you know, what what – based on when he performed that note, you know. Oh man, he he had 100% control of that audience and it looked like, I mean, I couldn't see real clearly, but it looked like there was a large large population of young gorgeous little girls there just <laughs> yeah. screaming their heads off for him. <laughs> oh yeah. man, he, he 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 I can only imagine the high that that guy was riding at the end of that song cuz I mean you can't deny it. Live performance is a drug. It makes your body create endorphins and, you know, dopamine and all this stuff. And I mean, you know, it's like Eleanor Goldfield says, it's the only drug that has no negative side effects that she knows of, you well, know, except for ego. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know. Well, you know, but lots of drugs kind of tap into ego. Oh <laughs> like yeah. That. Oh yeah. You know, and not saying that, you know, I don't know him. Uh, you know, that was just a blanket statement, not anything uh, uh, about Dimash. But, um, yeah, uh, his his way of working the crowd is really cool. Uh, I did happen to look up out of curiosity because I was curious, like, the setting, like, what Gaku, uh, which I'm probably saying incorrectly, Gaku voices. And, um, and just getting a, a tiny bit more information about him because apparently he was all classically trained. Mm-hmm. And Sounds then instead of taking a position at an opera, he decided to, you know, go the more contemporary route in which, you know, us, us here in the States, we don't, you know, since, since we're in a, an amalgam of different cultures, we don't really have, you know, folk music here isn't, doesn't have the same music as in other cultures that have had like, like a 500 or thousand year presence, you know, like in, in the UK, you could sing a song, you know, with, with people somewhere that people have been singing for like 800 years. And that has a, a different level of meaning and cultural significance than like here in the States, like, Hey, let's sing some Justin Bieber, you know, or something oh, like that, God. you know, oh. just, you know, or, uh, Hey, let's, you know, there's, you know, like, you know, many examples but but you get the idea that i'm, I'm yeah. going for there and that's um and and his choice to pursue uh like like kind of having one foot in the traditional music of where he's from mm-hmm. and the other foot in a more contemporary styling you know that that he is talking about writing that high you, you know that that has got to be an amazing feeling to, you know, have the cultural love like that, you know, and to play something that's traditional yet give it a slightly different spin, you know, and, and keep all that momentum, you know, that, that's, that's a really cool thing to watch happen. Okay. So I, I, I had some more things I wanted to say about this. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, no, sure. This is, 
This is his original song. Um, I would not have been able to tell that it was his original song versus, you know, a really highly respected cover that was already famous. It was a great song. Uh, apparently, according to the, the, the chat, he was 17 when he wrote this. I mean, this guy is extremely talented. Um, I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the chat and the audience uh, about our commentary about the D8. Um, I it, it, The note itself was not short. No, we heard it had vibrato. We heard it had body. We heard it was, it was, it was a good note. We heard it. For me, anyway... And I mean, maybe this is just, I had my own false expectation. The way I heard the first two songs of the Diva Dance and, you know, with the, um, with the SOS, I had just imagined it a little bit differently. I had imagined not just him just, wham, slamming you with a D8 like that and just holding it and then it, and then it, it vanishing. And, and this is my own expectation. It's just, I imagined it would be more like in a melody or in a phrase where, you know, it might be like the end of a phrase or whatever. I didn't expect it to be the beginning of a phrase like that. So it caught me a little bit off guard because, you know, here I am sort of mentally prepared for it and then it was not at all what I expected, which is cool. I mean, you know, I, I, I loved it. I thought it sounded incredible. And, you know, I cannot imagine uh, anyone's physical body making that sound, let alone a male's physical body, which is you generally going to be having more difficulty creating pitches of that, of that, 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 that pitch, you know, that vibration Anyone. is so high. Like, wow. It's almost, <laughs> it almost like, I think a certain part of it got cut off cause, or at least that's what I heard. Cause it, I think it was going almost going above uh, the range, which humans can hear. It, it, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty intense, and I mean, like, I I just massive respect. I am super, honestly, genuinely grateful for my pick. I loved it. I thought it was crazy, and you know, um, I, I'm I'm I, I yeah. I thought it was really, really, really crazy. Like, you know, it's one of those things like you just you just don't expect that sound to come out of someone and it just it, it was there and it was real and it was incredible. And I just can only imagine, you know, I wanna see more from Dimash. I wanna see more originals, more performances. Um, you know, I can only imagine as he seasons and grows and, you know, collaborates and explodes um, I mean, you know, he's already got over a million subscribers, you know, incredible, incredible singer. Um, anything else you want to say, Kyle? You got kind of booted out in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, just, uh, I, I'm so impressed with his, uh, sensibility of being a performer. And and that's why I, you know, looked up a little bit of his information because, you know, that's one criticism of studying music, you know, at a university level is you learn all about theory. You learn all about playing the notes, but you don't learn about getting on stage and connecting with that audience necessarily. And that's a whole different skill set, you know, and, and people that, that don't perform or, or don't have, you know, jobs where you have to connect with a large group of people that that is such an entirely different skill set than whatever it is you are doing that is, you know, like, like, for example, as a singer, you know, his ability to connect with an audience is an entirely different skill set than his ability to sing. Oh yeah. You know, and to write songs is an entirely different skill set. Right. I mean, did, yeah. He's, well, that, he's that song, good. I mean, I could, I don't know that uh, there were some parts like, like the high note, it was just like, it was like a guitar player putting in an extra guitar solo. It's like, oh well, that's that's cool. I didn't get the, and 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 I know a lot of it is me not knowing the language or what the song is about, you know, for, because of that barrier. But I mean, there were parts of the song I was like, oh well, this is you know an okay song. You know, it's not like I was blown away by the song itself, but <clears throat> his performance and and. Going out, you know, to the edge of the stage, knowing when to do that, knowing when to pull back, knowing to create that sense of drama. That's what really captivated me. 
like in general, a lot of people in other places in the world, or, or you know, especially maybe Europe or whatever, maybe in Asia, people speak more languages. I'm an mm-hmm. idiot. I only know English, and that's it. I never. I know a <laughs> tiny bit of French. I know a tiny bit of French. I'm not fluent in other languages. I know a little bit of a uh, Sanskrit, ancient Sanskrit, you know, <laughs> from yogic <laughs> chanting and stuff. Yeah. That's it. That's that, it. So don't... you got to factor in this guy. He performs in like. Well, I, somebody said, like, what was it 17 languages or something ridiculous? I mean, you know, he's fluent in a bunch of languages, you know, sings in a whole mess of languages. I learned to sing in different languages when I was in college <laughs> and stuff. You know, it's not that hard to just learn how to enunciate the stuff. But, yeah. like, <clears throat> think about it. He's that expressive. I'm blown away, dude. I liked it. Like, it, it was, was cool. like I said, the, the, the D8 context was not what I expected. Um, I expected it to be more surrounded by other notes and a phrase, and it wasn't. Other than that, because that's what I was listening for. I was listening for it, and I was like, that ain't D8. That ain't D8. No, no, no way. No way. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was like, okay, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you could see the the crowd getting ready, you know, and, and I, they knew. Me, I thought it was funny. You know, all the people have their phones upright, and uh, you know, I always tell, like, my wife, it's like, turn the phone this way, you know, so then it, you know, it looks – Looks yeah, better. You know. Yeah, uh, and, and there was one dude who has phone like that. At. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here with me. Thank you, Eve. Thank you, Kyle, for being my awesome guest. Everybody, make sure you mash that like button. Please go over to their channels. We're all just we're all just growing so much, and it's because of you guys. Thank you so much. This whole show is for you, for your comments, for your chats, for your thumbs up, and everything. We really appreciate it. And you know. In addition to Super Chats, Super Stickers, um, make sure you check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Matthew's Music Lesson Studio, where you can go ahead and sign up. You can request collaborations. You can request uh, covers. You can request, um, you know, uh, reactions, and you'll get uh, cut the line. The more you donate, the further ahead of the line you can jump. Please check out my website, matthewsmusiclessonstudio.com, where you can get music <laughs> lessons from me. And um, I can do voice, guitar, ukulele, and saxophone. And uh, songwriting, if you're interested in songwriting, music theory, all that kind of stuff. I can teach you about scales and chords and modes and whatever you want to learn. So, matthewsmusiclessonstudio.com. Make sure you like this video, share out the stream, and check out all of our websites. Links are in the description. I'll see you guys all next time. On the sound, live!